was built in 1914 in Jungenthal, Germany. So this locomotive is 105 years old. Now this is what's called an industrial narrow gauge compound Malay steam locomotive. And I know that's a mouthful, but I'll just mention the part about narrow gauge. What we're sitting on today is called a narrow gauge railway. It's two foot six inches wide. That's the width of the track. They call it narrow because standard gauge is four foot eight and a half. So this is just over half of the width of the normal railway. Now narrow gauge railways were popular throughout the British colonies. And in Barbados, this is the gauge that we use since 1898. They are cheaper to build. You don't need as much steel and you don't need as much land. So they're more practical. Our locomotive was built to work in Java, Indonesia. Now that's a world away from here. But there is a connection to Barbados. They are both sugarcane or were sugarcane producing islands. This locomotive hauled sugarcane for 82 years. And actually, it used to run on sugarcane bagasse. Now if you're not familiar with what bagasse is, it's basically the pulp of the sugarcane after you've ground it and extracted the cane juice, which is the valuable part of the sugarcane crop. Now what I will do is take you on a journey back in time to the time before Barbados had a railway. This railway that we had in Barbados existed from 1881 to 1937. That's 56 years of railway. Before we had a railway, it would have taken two or even three days to walk here to Cherry Tree Hill. Can you imagine walking two or three days in the hot sun? and pouring rain just to come and see a view we wouldn't have done it people stayed close to where they live in fact many people that lived in bridgetown have never even seen st philip that may sound shocking to us but it's true a lot of people stayed close to home it's too far to travel all of that was changed in 1881 when we opened our first railway that railway transformed two or three days of walking into a less than two hour train ride that is remarkable today because the buses can't even compete with that. <laughs> when we, what I will do is reproduce one of the most popular train rides and that was called the Sunday Excursion or the Sunday Picnic. Now that may sound familiar to our ears today because of course the transport board still continues that tradition. Those started on the railway and they were immensely popular. Imagine you're a Barbadian. All of a sudden this railway has opened. You have a few pennies in your pocket and you want something to do on a Sunday afternoon or look for the whole Sunday, what better than to go and visit the East Coast, especially if you've never seen it. Now before we go on our expedition, we have to buy our train tickets, right? You don't get on a train without a ticket. Now there were three classes of passengers. Now I don't mean to pick on you guys in the back here, don't worry, there'll be more people joining you, so I'm not picking on you. This is third class. This is where the cheap people like me would have been stuck. <laughs> now this is also the heaviest and most populated part of the train. Now you guys in the middle here, you spent a little bit extra, but not extra enough. This is of course, second class. Not too bad. By the way, the coaches you're sitting in today are reproductions of the second class carriages on the railway. This is the preserve of the few that could afford the most expensive and exclusive ticket available on the railway. This is of course what we just will call today the bougie section. First class, welcome aboard. The train departs for Child Street, you heard me right. What is today a bus terminal? But 158 years ago, that was a bus night train station. So the train departed for Child Street. It crosses the Constitution River twice, east up through Welches. We cross right across the Valley of St. George. We pass Buckley Sugar Factory into the um, into Christ Church. Oh, okay, how many of you have been to St. John Parish Church? Yeah. You're familiar with the views from that side of the island. Imagine getting those types, that type of scenery from this railway. And as this lady just said, it's the first time they've ever seen it in their lives. So the train continues its journey north towards Concept Point through Forrestview, and it does a hairpin into the parish of St. John. I don't have to describe the views as I said, but all of a sudden those views are cut short as we descend the dreaded Concept Cutting. This was the steepest gradient ever built on any railway at the time. The train goes down through 80 feet of hand cut rock, and we go through this very dark cavern until we finally arrive into the village of Bath. The cut rock gives way like a curtain onto the incredible scenery of the East Coast as illustrated behind me. So that lovely view that you guys were just admiring out there, the railway used to follow that coastline. Can you imagine weaving its way in and out of all these coves and bays? Had this railway survived to this day, Barbados would have in its possession the single most beautiful and scenic narrow gauge railway in the world. Unfortunately, we can only romanticize about it today, but let's continue. Ba, Bathsheba, Cattle Wash. The train crosses over the Joe's River Bridge, right around 
and then over the long pond bridge. And finally, we arrive at the Bell Plain train station, that's right behind us in that valley. At Bell Plain, they had a turntable, just like the one we have here. The locomotive would be separated from the train, on the boat, and back onto the front of the train to make it ready for a journey back to Bridgetown, just like we demonstrated today. Now, this would have obviously have been in the evening. So you had the whole day to spend with your family, your friends, perhaps have a picnic, or perhaps you want to stay a little longer. What about at a new hotel? You see, railway hotels were built to serve this railway. We have the Roundhouse. You all know the Roundhouse today? It's the restaurant. You know how about the Atlantis Inn? The train was also a railway hotel. You had to walk three or four miles off the railway to get to the train. So you know what they did in 1896? What they did was they built their own railway from Carrington right to the front door of the hotel. And back then it was called the Crane Railway Hotel and Casino. This railway lasted for 56 years. Barbadians used the railway to transport goods and merchandise themselves. The train ticket was one penny in third class, one penny from Bershaw to St. Philip, and an additional penny from St. Philip to St. Andrew. So the railway was always popular. It never lacked for business. Now all of this unfortunately came to an end in 1937. I will not bore you with the 101 reasons why they closed it, nor will I bore you with the 110 reasons why it could have been kept. However, it is what it is. Now, for your information, the government of Barbados still owns and protects the right of way, which is the land that the track sat on. Now, small sections of it became road. We all know the Ermiborn Highway. That was once the rail bed. So just a few small sections of it, a few bridges were retained for use as road. But the rest of the land is still owned and protected by the government. I will describe to you one of the most unique features of this railway. You see... When this railway was opened, they, re they wrote a rule book for it, and the British wrote this rule book. And one of the rules was called the call stop. Now, I think this is a very interesting rule because we still do it today. You ready? Okay, let me show you. This is the railway right here. Look, a train coming right there. Chuck, 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 chuck. I need to catch that train, you know. But guess what? I got a problem. The train station is two miles that way. No, either I better become an Olympic athlete quick, or I'm going to miss the train. Now the train is moving at about 18 miles an hour, so that is going to be a tricky one to do. You could try, but you may hurt yourself or kill yourself. But no, there's a rule that will help me. It's called the call stop. You ready for me to demonstrate it? Put your hand out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the train driver's attention. The conductor is there too good. He's slowing down the train. Good, it's slowing up now. I can hop onto it. And I'm going to have to pay the conductor for my ticket. Does that sound familiar? Is something we do today? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you do not need a bus stop in this country. <laughs> a simple hand gesture will catch you a bus. And that, believe it or not, started 158 years ago on this railway. So the past is still connected to the present, although we don't think about it. As I was saying, the Sunday excursion, the Sunday picnic, all of the hotels and everything. So the railway had a dramatic impact on the life of Barbadians. Anyhow, that's enough history for one day. I gave you history of the train, history of the area, and history of this locomotive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.